Hey everyone, it's Hicks here from TGN and TSM, and welcome to episode 5 of TSM Talk. Today, Duncan and myself are going to be discussing the Battlefield 3 beta news, Deus Ex Human Revolution one month after release, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, and the possibility of the porn industry coming to the Xbox 360. But before we get started, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who's been watching the show and giving me feedback. It definitely helps improve the show. Uh, for example, the annotations that I have in all the episodes now that allow you to pick the discussions you'd rather watch instead of uh, watching the show in its entirety. Also, just be sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It just lets me know that you care. Alright, so let's get started with this episode by start talking about Battlefield 3 beta release. As you guys might have seen inside the you know gaming news and stuff like that, that Battlefield official beta release is going to be on September 29th, which is next Thursday, I believe. And uh, if you pre-ordered the game, you get it two days beforehand, so that'd be on the 27th, which is a Tuesday, which is all fine and dandy with anyone who's pre-ordering it before the 25th, which is tomorrow. You know, uh, if you read what you get with the pre-order, you know, you get the Type 88 light machine gun with the bipod, the special ammo for the, the shotgun, and then the flash suppressor for the SKS sniper rifle. And then you get the Back to Carcan expansion pack, which was um, a map on Battlefield 2. But if um, I remember, I don't know, I, I might have misread it or something, but when I pre-ordered the game itself, I pre-ordered it about a week after it was available to be pre-ordered on Battlefield's website. And when I read the description, it allowed me to have, it said, exclusive beta for Battlefield 3 Origin. Like, you had to get it from Origin. Now when you read it, it says open beta for Battlefield 3 origin exclusive. So they've like changed some of the wording, I thought, at least it looks like to me, and how I interpreted when I bought the game. So when I was about the game, I thought it was exclusive beta access to play people who only pre-ordered the game. And now that I see that it's open beta, it kind of sucks for me because I was really hoping to be in the exclusive club, if you want to call it, that allowed me to be one of the beta testers for this game because the alpha was closed, and so I was hoping the beta was closed. And so, you know, it kind of, kind of again, it made me kind of sad. But I also see why they're doing it as well because there is a reported 1.5 million pre-orders for this game. That's a lot of beta keys given out, and I think that's why they went to the open beta because because it's such a hype game, there's so many pre-orders for it, that might as well just get as many people as possible to beta test this and make sure it's an, a, a pristine and almost perfect game. I mean, in Battlefield Bad Company 2, there were connectivity issues, which you know I, I believe Duncan's going to be talking about because he experienced a lot of it with the Xbox version. And, uh, you know, day one release on Medal of Honor and Battlefield Bad Company 2 was just terrible, at least for the PC side. It, it took three to four weeks before before it was actually playable for us. And so that's why I think they're coming out with the open beta. Uh, Duncan, what's your thoughts on this? Well, as uh, I mentioned to you earlier before, uh, we've already had the alpha, which was in terms of uh, your super secret uh, super secret club get to play Battlefield before everybody else. They decided to open it after seeing that the, the alpha was there to basically work out the kinks. Kinks such as level design, class issues, balancing, weapon damage, and stuff like that. And the beta, which will be on a wider scale, which will probably have more people monitoring it, will be able to focus on on server connectivity, the ability to handle the stress of so many people playing on it at once because as you can see, Battlefield 3 has had a much more intense media uh, advertisement advertisement campaign. I've seen more commercials for Battlefield 3 than I have for all of the Battlefields combined. The beta, of course, like Hicks was saying, it was originally going to be closed off to a select few people, but now the fact that everybody else is getting into it has Hicks here a little, little angry, a little, little sore. You, you angry there, buddy? Because I'm pre-ordering it right now, and I'm getting the beta access. Yeah, I know, I know. Don't worry, though, because uh, Battlefield 3 is going to be my most anticipated game of the year because I enjoy class-based shooters. And uh, the fact of the matter is I hope to God that they do not have the same repeats of what just happened with Battlefield Bad Company 2 and Medal of Honor, where release night, the... <laughs> 
the servers were unplayable. The servers were unplayable for about two to three weeks afterwards because of, due to connectivity issues between uh, Xbox Live and the EA servers. And the reason why I play on Xbox is because most of my friends from home do. Uh, I play PC games, though, as well, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be getting Battlefield 3 on the PC. Well, I am right now, actually. I have it pulled up and everything just to spite Hicks. But I'm looking forward to this game, and it looks very promising. And I cannot wait for the beta. And I will see you guys out there on the 27th. Um, yeah, Duncan, that's pretty funny uh, that you are getting it now, and you're going to get everything that I got. And again, it's it's not a big deal now, but when I first saw the news, I was pretty upset about it. But, you know, I know what they're doing, and it, it, and it's okay. It's a good business move for them. It'll allow them to make sure that their game is how they want it. And, you know, I, I'm glad that you're getting the beta. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people in TSM are getting the beta as well because they're excited for this game. I think this Battlefield version has had the largest following for the Battlefield series, personally. I mean, I've never even heard of Battlefield even having over a million players on it. Uh, at least when I played Battlefield 2 in 2142, there was not even half that. Like, maybe 10,000 played Battlefield Bad Company 2 on the PC. And it was only for a few months as well. Call so, of Duty boats sinking. Well, I mean, even the Call of Duty games, uh, Black Ops had nowhere near the following of what this game has had for the PC, the PC side. I know console sides are much higher, but the PC PC side, their day one release, and when all major bugs, bugs were fixed for Black Ops, there was a max of 40,000 players playing on the PC, and uh, that was at peak times, and most of the time it's only around 10,000 on the PC, so seeing that there's going to be 1.5 million players that have already pre-ordered, that are usually guaranteed pre-order players uh, for Battlefield 3, that's awesome news, and I think that most of these guys that are pre-order are PC players, because I've known, I know players plenty of people that have been wanting to build gaming rigs to play this game and you can do it pretty affordably you don't need to buy a two thousand dollar system or a fifteen hundred dollar system to play battlefield 3 on good settings i mean i've made i may i have pre-build builds that you can pay under seven eight hundred dollars for and so you know it's an affordable way to get started in the pc realm and i think that i think the pc side is going to see a huge turnaround um, with this game coming out i yeah i can't wait uh personally i've been waiting for this game ever since the announcement was made almost a year ago the fact they were bringing back jets the different classes from battlefield 2 such as the support class to throw down ammo and everything to make sure that people stay resupplied the fact that they are making it more of a role different roles than the previous bad company foray and where they only had four classes which combined the best of all of them uh, I absolutely hated Rambo Jesuses with the machine guns and the ability to to walk across the battlefield reviving the dead because uh, basically that makes them extremely high value targets to the point where if you play as a medic people usually go for you first or the the fact that you kill someone and have them instantly revive. Like, you kill a bunch of people. You kill massive amounts of people. Their tickets are down, at least 10 tickets. And then a medic comes in and revives all of them after he kills you with his big machine gun. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I definitely think that they're going to be making these these changes that they've made to the classes. It's going to really balance the gameplay itself. Playing, when I played, you know, the, the main thing I was really mad about, or, or not mad about, but disgruntled about, was that we couldn't go prone in Battlefield Back Company 2. And I'm glad they're bringing it back um, from Battlefield 2 and putting it into Battlefield 3. You know, I think the way they're going to be able to allow you to see players and stuff is you'll be able to they'll have like the red dot markers will be easier to spot players and stuff like that now. But, um, you know, something that it kind of stinks, but I see what they're doing is leaving the commander out of Battlefield 3. I know, and I pro you probably did it yourself, is when you and your buddy were commander, I know at least on Karkand, at least me and my buddy Kawhi used to do, is we'd get the first flag, we'd go over to the tall building, which I believe was B, flag B, and we'd go up on top of that roof, and we would drop crates around us. So like if we got hit by a grenade or, or we got um, picked out by a UAV or something, we were able to get health really quick. We would never die. And it would allow people to spawn on us and it really Jerks. Yeah, it allowed us to keep the flag and win most games because you know people can spawn off the commander and so we would stay up there and i'd revive him he'd revive me we'd take out players so he would drop vehicles on people so you know we did a lot of things like that that i think they're taking away from battlefield 3 and i think it's for the positive side so it won't allow any more of that uh gayness going on 
I hear <laughs> I hear now that there's actually uh, I'm not sure about this, but one of my friends was talking about the fact that there's going to be different channels between the different squad leaders in the game, and then channels between the squads themselves. So there's no crosstalk unless it's about taking an objective or anything like that. And if you were a squad leader, then you would have the ability to talk to other squads to help and try and coordinate something. You know, because Xbox for team games. Primarily, we use the party system, and the party system is basically a retarded version of Re- Ventrilo, where yeah. <laughs> you can go in and have different channels and everything like that of audio to say you have like eight of your friends in there. But sometimes when eight of your friends are screaming about how their guts are hanging out because uh, they ran into a machine gun nest for the umpteenth time, it kind of wears on your nerves a bit. So I'm glad to see that they're going to have uh, different channels for people to speak in. Yeah, that sounds actually really interesting. I really hope that's true because it'd be nice to be able to talk to other squads and just the squad leaders. So there's, you know, let's say there's four squads, you're only talking to four people. That'd be really nice um, instead of listening to all 20 people talking at once. Uh, because it seemed like in Bad Company 2, there was hardly any communication. Like, it was either you and four of your guys in Ventrilo on the PC talking to each other because the squad system or the mic system on Bad, Bad Company 2 sucked and you couldn't understand hardly anyone, or just no one talked or the servers didn't allow talking. And that's what happened on PC. Most of the servers didn't allow talking, so you had to use Ventrilo or TeamSpeak to talk to each other. So if they bring this to, you know, keep the chatter down, maybe that might help. You know, that probably definitely help the, the squad system. Uh, on that or I can degree. just uh, freaking spam the uh, the button to give me ammo for the twentieth time after emptying a clip in your face because you're a deaf assault character <laughs> or deaf support character or revive me, please. <laughs> for sure, I definitely. I've been really excited. I mean, I, I've always loved the Battlefield series. And, you know, I was already intending to get this game because I knew they'd make a huge improvement. One, on the, the game engine, which is Frostbite 2, which is one of the best engines I've seen out there. You know, Crytek engine... Destructible environments. Uh... I mean, Crytek engine can suck it. Because, yeah, Crytek engine's good, but it was only good on the first Crisis. Uh, since then, it looks just like a DirectX 9 Call of Duty finger paint type game or engine Most to me. Most people are going to be like, oh, Hicks, that's blasphemy. <laughs> I know they will, but crisis. I mean, you know, I, I really enjoyed Crisis 1. I loved the engine. I didn't enjoy Crisis 2. hated the engine. So seeing that and knowing that DICE has always been a, a, a really good community, a community or a, a company that listens to the community, you know, they really designed the Frostbite 2 engine around what the community really wanted to see. And they've done a great job. When I saw that Caspian border with the jets, that was the first time I really got to see the engine at work. As you might know, I graduated with a game development degree of sort where I understand how engines work and seeing how this engine is working, it is fantastic and it's going to run our systems hard and that's okay because that means this engine will be good for a three, two to three years at least and they'll just keep improving it and it'll just make games look just that much more real. Well, uh, I know that DICE probably has a couple resume requests from Hicks right now, but uh, definitely looking forward to Battlefield 3. It is a must-have for the holiday season for anybody who enjoys a tactical-based shooter that is deeper than Call of Duty in terms of just sprint around and shoot everything. Because now you sprint around and shoot everything with a class base, and uh, you also have to watch out for tanks and jets and uh, mounted machine guns, and you actually have to coordinate with... You actually have to socialize with other people on your team yeah and it's not like we're bashing call of duty either i mean i i play all the call of duties i love call of duty because it's a fast-paced game so anyone who's watching this don't be offended that we're dissing on call of duty we don't like call of duty it's just battlefields in a different league of fps shooters than call of duty is as well as counter-strike counter-strike to me in my personal eyes is on the top of first person shooters being a skill-based shooter and then it goes Battlefield and Call of Duty. But yeah, I think that that's all we really got to talk about regarding um, the Battlefield 3 beta and just Battlefield in general and what we're expecting and how excited we are for the game. Regardless that, you know, some of the pre-order guys got a little screwed at the end. But, you know, it all it's all for a reason and all for a good, good reason at that. So let's move on to the second part of the discussion, which is Deus Ex Human Revolution one month after release. You know, I've had time and Duncan, you've had time and most of the players that are watching this have had time to play the game through all and being able to see all the endings, you know, seeing how the game works as itself. And now it's it has the ability to give a true review and uh, and a good talk about it. Uh, I 
personally enjoyed the game a lot. It was a great start for the set of release games that are coming out. For sure, it is a long game. It's around 20 plus hours if you do all the side quests, quests and stuff like that. And um, has some of the best endings. It's not a lot of... It's not the t- style of endings that most people were probably anticipating, but it's it's the thought process of the real world, our world, is how what would happen if, if Adam did these things or if this happened in real life, how the world could be looked at. Well, in terms of uh, the fact that I have knives that shoot out of my arms, I'm pretty sure I'd be on board with the, uh, the augmentation side. That and the ability to jump off a building and totally survive. That makes kind of makes my uh, trip to work a little more fun, especially if someone cuts me off and just slash their tires. Uh, the fact that the, the amount of freedom in, that is offered in this game is amazing. The fact that I can run around punching hookers in the face and uh, d- punching through walls, playing basketball on a court. I was doing that to get that achievement that they had. Sit there, casually read a newspaper and then go sneak into a secret top secret security facility. The amount of options in this game are endless. The story, though, is a, a bit of a lacking part on the on the side of trying to figure out why in the hell the, these people that you're fighting are so angry with you. Um, the first the first boss, all I could garner from him is that he was fr- he was an American, and he was very angry at me for some reason. Maybe uh, I had come, stumbled upon a super secret lair, and he had a machine gun for an arm that would kill me very quickly because I decided to put all my skill tree into hacking and all that super secret s- spy stuff that makes the game way more interesting when you play it the first time around. So he absolutely destroyed me at least ten times before I realized, oh, I can hit him with a stun gun and then proceed to throw barrels at him. But other than that, that and the ending, which I'm not going to go into too much, those were kind of let down for me, but it's more made up for the fact of the environment design, the amount of acting except for Jensen, because seriously, there's only so many Batman imitators that you can have out there. I never never asked for this. That kind of stuff, you know. It it was really hard to listen to him talk in the conversation. Other people, though, played their parts really well. What what else did I really love about this game? Oh yeah, the fact that uh, you could basically, the, uh, the way you wanted to play, you could play that way except for the first boss hacking turrets one of the things i would do is i would hack turrets and then i would carry the turrets around with me the entire map and kill everyone in my way without having to break a sweat yeah i definitely have to agree on all those points i i didn't think the 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 story itself was you got really into it but there were parts like you said like the bosses that you fought like they had no relation to you other than they were the people that killed you in the beginning that's about all i got from them i know they were being used and things like that are being paid and hiding secrets and all that good stuff but that was all we knew about them there wasn't like a relation to adam and them agree with the the voice acting itself was awesome besides adam jensen he had like you said the the, the batman voice <laughs> the christian the christian voice but i never asked for this like he had no emotion and stuff like that and you know other than that one negative thing the the voice acting the conversations you had with npcs were really good and it actually thought felt that you were talking to real people or you're actually having a conversation instead of just like hey how's it going where's the information oh it's over here you know you actually got to get into it and the and the decisions you chose in the conversations depicted on how they reacted and how their next set of acting or their voices change and stuff like that. So it was really, really cool in seeing how they had really good voices and good A-plus Hollywood style acting in the game. Gameplay wise, you know, it's a Deus Ex game. You have the freedom to be a run and gunner. You have the freedom to be a ninja. You have the freedom to be both at the same time if you wanted to be. I personally beat the game first on the hardest difficulty because I've all been a Deus Ex fan for a long time. I really enjoyed the first one. The second one was a disappointment, but it was still a pretty decent game. So I was really excited for this one, and they really turned this franchise around with this game for sure. Like I said, over 20 hours of gameplay. I chose to be the stealth guy, and it would have been the it was the worst decision I did for my first playthrough because that first boss, man, took me 
forever to beat. I'm talking like hours at a time. Like I played for the first hour and I couldn't beat him. I had to take breaks because I had to figure out ways to not get shot two to three times before I die. So deciding your decision on your augments in the beginning is crucial and it can actually depend if you succeed or fail in in the story itself. But the thing that I found is during the first half of the game, I was getting XP like crazy. Like I was leveling up on the hardest difficulty faster, I felt, than I was playing on the easiest difficulty. I don't know why I felt like that, but I felt like when I got halfway through the game, the game was extremely easy by the second half of the game. So the last two bosses, or the last boss was super easy. I just took my rocket launcher, or my grenade launcher, I don't know which one I used, and I hit him like five times, and that was it. That was That's how easy it was. So, you know, depending on the augments you do can affect actually how hard the game becomes later, later on. And even early on, like I said in the in the beginning the first boss took forever and was probably the hardest boss out of all of them but i mean overall the game was superb you know i hope they do you know either remake the first two or try to expand off of the second one because um i really want to see this franchise keep with this game because it is a great game um i just like the ability to have the choice and have choices and they depend on if i succeed or fail and you know honestly i give this game an 8.5 out of 10 i mean there was little things that weren't that could have, that can be improved, like the voice acting of the main character. Some of the 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 actual spending of your augmentations can actually greatly affect you in the beginning. Things like that. Yeah, I would I'd have to go with Hicks on this one with an 8.5. The environments where you fight through are amazing. I mean, there's one there's a city in China that you are going through where there's a lower district and there's an upper district and it's not in terms of ones in the north and ones in the south it's no one one district is built on top of the other district and it really makes for an interesting interesting place to be when you look up at the lower district and all you can see is the bottom of a city below you or above you and fighting your way all the way from the bottom of a building that's in the bottom district all the way to the top that's a very good level that's one of my favorites Voice acting, of course, lacking on the main character's part. And uh, Bennett just seems like an angry Texan through and through. Other than that, I, I was very, I enjoyed this game very much, and I'm enjoying my second playthrough as well because I'm going to go through and I'm going to massacre everyone. All right, so that will wrap up the second part of our discussion on Deus Ex. So we're going to move on to the last two discussions, and we'll start off with Skyrim, which is the fifth installment of Bethesda. Is that how you say it? Their uh, franchise of the Elder oh, no, Scrolls Hicks. series. <laughs> Is English your first language? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to go with Skyrim, which is a fifth installment of the Elder Scrolls series. Now, I started with Morrowind, which was Elder Scrolls 3, and I really enjoyed it. And I didn't get Oblivion until about, you know, a year after it was released. And I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I like all the mods that there are for the PC. It keeps you playing and playing. But if you play the vanilla game, the one thing that really interests me the most was all the side quests for Oblivion. Like, I got Vampire empirism right in the beginning and it sucked the entire way through and it took me almost i think a total of eight hours to get a cure for vampirism and it it, it sucks so bad but i really enjoyed hanging the, out the wrong crowd there right you no know. it's like it's one of your first missions you have to go into this cave and you fight vamp vampires and if they hit you you have a chance of getting the vampirism disease and it's like an 80%, it seems like, because every time I've played it, I always get it, and I hate it. But other than the little things like Edward that... Cullen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the game itself is great, and uh, looking at Skyrim, I have... I am just so excited for this game. You know, am I going to get it on release date? Probably not, because I'll be playing Battlefield 3, and Counter-Strike Go will be coming yep. out soon after that. So it'll be one of those games that I get during probably holiday season, probably quarter two of next year, to just have something to keep me till the next season of games. But the overall look and the revampness of this game is unbelievable. I mean, the graphics are hundreds, hundreds of times better than Oblivion by far. I I mean, I've looked at so many gameplay. I've seen the developer gameplays, and they have really, really listened. And they're making sure this game is what we've been wanting for a long time. I mean, what other game could you play where you take a nice, relaxing stroll with your bronze sword by the lake and uh, do some me menial quests, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a freaking dragon? I mean, come on. The, the propensity for random events in this game, because I know there's going to be random events, just like there were in... 
Oblivion and Fallout and everything like that. I just, you know, I want to see a dragon attack a town. That's what I want to see. That's going to be hilarious. Because uh, that that is what I take the most out of Bethesda games is just random encounters like out in the, out in the wasteland or out in the forest. Uh, it's just the fact that, you know, you'll just be walking along and you'll hear gunfire and you'll take cover. Or you'll hear the sounds of blades, crossing blades. You take cover and you see what the hell's going on, and uh, it's this huge giant just tr- tearing apart these Imperial guards, and uh, you can either choose to A, help them, or B, laugh maniacally as they all get torn apart. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That was one thing that I am excited about, is the dragon and the, those huge orcs, or whatever they were, they were like ten times taller than you, and it was just insane how that dragon picked it up and threw it like it was nothing. Like, I can't wait to be looking at those NPCs or those random scripted events um, to happen, and I can either, like you said, choose to help them, watch them, fight them. I mean, it, those little elements of, of the Oblivion game, or the Elder Scrolls games, is what makes them so unique. Something else that I'm glad they finally did, you know, I like the, the, the combat system they've already had, but they've made it perfect for me. Now you can hold, you know, two-handed swords, you can dual-wield weapons. I don't know if you can dual-wield... Uh, uh, bow and, and arrows stuff. not bow and arrows <laughs> magical <right? laughs> but i mean like being able to dual wield now is, is something that's huge i've always wanted to do it. i was always wanting to dual wield weapons and not just have a two-handed sword being able to now combine the same magical spells into one massive spell is really cool what i'm really hoping and looking forward to might be a uh, sneak or a special thing that they want you to see as a player in the game is maybe you can combine two different spells to make a different different spell you know maybe ice and lightning or water and lightning and make like this huge i don't know beam of electrocuted water or something that does like double damage or something of that nature but it seems like they've really redid the combat system to where now it's not just a warrior that is always the best character to have because that's what it always seems like when i've played the elder scrolls games that the warrior type class is always the best the one that uses blades and shields and it seems like now you can be you know someone who is an archer and is really good or someone who is a mage and their skills are just as good as being a warrior i've also noticed that they've changed the hud to where i know i don't i didn't really pay attention to oblivion but in morrowind when you chose your skills in the beginning when you created your character you chose stars or a constellation that represented you as a character i always chose the tower because i would like to i liked being the thief and unlocking things without being seen and in this in, in skyrim it looks like you can have multiple skills and level up those skills uh, for example if let's say i was an archer and let's say i wanted to upgrade my archery skills i had inside that tree was a tree of more skills so i don't know if they're like specific where you do like more damage when they hit in the head or skill section yeah trees within trees so like you can have let's say there's 50 skills all together that you can use and modify within each skill let's say there's 10 sub skills and you can level those up so in total there's around i don't know what i say 10 so about 500 skills in total that you can possibly have which is awesome that, lo- that allows a lot of replay a lot of replay or just a long time of playing and the fact that uh the you were talking about the horoscopes on steroids the fact that you could put certain points underneath those stars and fill out the skills underneath those stars to help level up your character personally i would want to be the guy who's running on top of rooftops and uh wearing and wearing a ninja costume with a bow and arrow shooting imperial guards in the face because i decided to steal a teacup and someone saw it and apparently the the penalty for stealing a teacup is death so i'm uh, basically a moder or a excuse me a oblivion era robin hood but uh the one thing is when i find myself playing the the elder scrolls game series i cannot play as a non-human character because it's just awkward for me to go in third person after slashing somebody up and doing that doing that 360 camera pan view that i'm all of you are guilty of where you look at your character and he's like yeah you're awesome and he's got a big huge cat face yeah i'd have to agree i don't usually play anything else than the human the human races i know there's like three or 
four different human class races inside. We're so racist. In <laughs> Morrowind. <laughs> but, like, I could never play as the orc or the wood elf or the dark elf. Well, actually, I played dark elf once, but I made sure I could never see his face because it was always <laughs> disturbing. Like, I always made sure he had, like, a full helmet on so I could never see his face because it's just disturbing to me. I, I just, I don't know what it is. It's just. It's, it's... all right. You put the bag over your head, you'll be pretty. <laughs> But I mean, uh, so yeah, I'm not going to be pre-ordering this game per se, but I'm definitely going to get it. It just depends on what games, first-person shooter-wise, that are coming out, because that's mainly what I play, and seeing if Diablo 3 is going to be coming out quarter one of next year, because they're already in beta phases, and uh, there's plenty of footage on YouTube already about it, and I'm already super excited that I don't even want to get into a discussion about that. But that's what I'm really leaning on right now, is BF3, Counter-Strike Go, and... Diablo 3. Uh, Duncan, I don't know about you. I mean, are you going to pre-order? Are you going to get it when it first releases? Are you going to wait? Well, there is no pre-order bonus, as many of you know. So that is a definite no, Ghost Rider, because I'm going to be so busy and occupied with the massive plethora of games that are coming out over the holiday season that I'm pretty sure that I will become extremely pale to the point where I walk outside and I will catch fire because I will be spending so much time playing through Battlefield 3 with all of my friends both on the PC and on the Xbox and then I will be playing once again through Deus Ex. I also have a, another a multitude of games that I, I haven't even finished Dead Island yet. I still gotta get through that. So I'm pretty sure I'm occupied. Uh, Oblivion's definitely gonna be a quarter two of next year buy for me because, or excuse me, Skyrim, because I'm gonna need a single player game that'll be able to draw me into a world where I can either p steal from the rich and give to the poor or steal for myself for no apparent reason or do whatever I want. And it's got dragons. So I'm pretty much sold on that for a later purchase. All right, that sounds good. So we'll wrap up the Skyrim discussion, and we're going to move on to <laughs> the funny discussion. <laughs> the one that I found very funny when it was posted in uh, the TSM forums, but it's an article that basically is saying that the porn industry, or at least this, this, this porn site, is coming to the Xbox 360, or it's for Xbox 360 gamers. Um, in this discussion, you know, we're not going to be talking, we're going to be talking about the site and what it is, but it's it's not going to be uh, explicit and things like that. But what the, the site is called Pwned by Girls, and it's hosted by the porn stars Elena Evans and Misty Dawn, who personally I've never heard of. And it's this site and, the, and this whole... This this whole ordeal is basically these porn stars playing video games topless and you can stream and you can watch their live stream and watch them do this personally that sounds like the most boring porn i've ever even heard of uh, yeah it's I've, I've got the internet for that and i can find <laughs> memories pretty easily on netflix at any given point <laughs> And, 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 and the, the funny part is, you have to, at least what I read, is you have to be friends with them on Xbox Live to get updates or when they're going to do it. Or, friend, ugly chicks. Or, or to play with them. And that's the other thing. These, at least Elena Evans, I haven't really even looked at Misty Dawn other than she's apparently and quoted the, the nerdiest porn star ever, which sounds retarded because she's played a couple of video games and now she's a proclaimed nerdy girl. But Elena Evans by far is the ugliest chick I've ever seen porn star wise B -b -b butterface <laughs> I mean, looking at the site now, the first picture is her hovering over a thing of games with clothes on, and she's got this unattractive face and smile. I'm pretty sure that red, <laughs> that Xbox that she's hanging over is red ringed already. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. like, the thing is, is their their game sessions or their live stream sessions. It seems like is only once a month. And the first one was with Gears of War 3, and this next one is October 5th, and they're going to be playing uh, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2012. And the, the guest is Jocelyn James, which is one of the girls that Tiger Woods slept with, one of the porn stars <laughs> he slept with, which is funny. Playing him in more ways than one. But when you look at their, their time schedule or the time that they're going to be actually streaming, they stream for three hours on Tuesdays from 7 to, yeah, 7 to 10, which is... Is, and they only do it once a month, which means they have to, people who actually want to watch this, which I don't even understand why you would want to mix game time with or man alone time. <laughs> yeah, but, well, here, here's the thing. There's some guy, there will be some sad, lonely guy eating Cheetos in an office somewhere who will, 
he will look at his watch on a Tuesday afternoon. And he he'll look at it, he's like, oh god, I'm missing I'm missing live stream right now with Pwned by Girls. Because, yeah, the uh, thing is, there's people that are gonna be like that. I think. I know. And for those of you who are out there, um, there's this thing called the gym and this thing called social interaction. You should get on that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, I can't even imagine what the live stream would look like. Like, is there going to be a camera where you don't even see the game? They're just playing with a controller and they're laughing with each other and you are in an awkward position looking at their boobs? Or are they going to be like on a side shot where you see the side of their boob and they're still laughing and you see part of a game? Or is it going to be from behind where you don't even see them at all? With, you just see that they have a shirt off and they're you're you've watching been, them play. You've been putting Gears a lot of, of thought into these boobs with video games thing, X. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have a girlfriend? Is she around somewhere? You know. Yeah, she's right here next to me watching. I don't even know what she's watching. Some girl stuff. Supernatural. There she goes. He just said it for you guys. Supernatural season seven. <laughs> but I mean, it just I don't know. I think this is the worst idea I've ever heard of personally. I mean, it's not going to attract person any I know it's not it doesn't attract me. It, it sounds like the dumbest thing I've ever even heard of. Plus, I mean, if you're going to have just saying that cuz his girlfriend's sitting next to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean if you think about it, who wants to watch someone play games when you can play them? Exactly. I mean, if well, I'm going to watch someone play a game and they're on my friends list, I'm going to jump in and play with them, regardless if they're topless or not. Or if you have a girlfriend and she can be topless sitting right next to you sure. playing them. <laughs> well, in terms of, like, the girl gamer uh, stereotype and everything like that, the fact that, you know, girl gamers are just out there trying to play games normally like guys and everything like that, I think this sets them back quite a bit. Uh, I, I don't know. What does Nikki, Nikki think about all this? Well, she thought it was a dumb idea anyway, and she agrees with me thinking, like, if you want to, if I wanted to, she wanted to play a game, she would just go and play it, you know, and... Topless. Exactly. Like, that, but she doesn't, she just feels that, and I feel that it's just one of those things that it's not going to work, and it really does diminish the view or, or the stereotype of a girl gamer, you know, only they, they when you think of a girl gamer, now you're going to be thinking of porn stars playing or people like Olivia Munn, who are really newscast people or models. But, you know, I don't know. I think I think it's really diminished the view of what a girl gamer really is. It's just another person like a guy who likes to sit and play games and talk with buddies and ventrilo or teen speak. But as soon as she lets them know she's a girl, she will be hit on by every single player of that game. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I personally think this is a dumb idea. I don't know. What do you – I mean, you, you have the same thought as I do, at least it seems like with me. It's easier for me to find memories than tuning in once a week for uh, a live stream for some Butterface playing games I don't even like. Yeah, I was like, what the? I was like, I when you first showed me that link, I thought you were kidding, because <laughs> um, I was I was looking. Let's see if I can find a picture of Jocelyn James right now. So yeah, I think. I think that'll uh, wrap up the show, guys. We talked a lot today. We talked with the Battlefield 3 stuff. We got Deus Ex, Skyrim, and the funny somehow this is going to work porn industry coming to 360. Again, if, if you haven't done so already, just like the video, comment, and subscribe to my channel as well as the TGN channel. Uh, oh, also cool like, kids are doing it. Also like uh, to let everyone know that I recently just got signed with TGN, so now I'm an official director with TGN. So you'll be seeing more of me on the TGN channel as well as my oh, own uh, Dunk and again, like to thank you for coming on. I might make you a regular because you definitely make things a little bit more interesting for me. Again, guys, it's Hicks here, and I'll see you guys next time. Why oh, you flatter me?